Hello, hello, hello. What's up, guys? It's your man, Jay Will. So we are going to talk about none other than your perfect smell f- smell phone, smartphone. <laughs> I, I, I was going to say cell phone, but I, that's going to go down in history. Smell phone. That'll be, that'll be a thing one day. Smartphone. <laughs> It's your man, Jay Will. So we're going to talk about um, if you can ever, if you'll ever get your perfect smartphone, will you ever do it? Like, is that is that going to be a thing? Will the companies and OEMs ever make the perfect smartphone? Well, the short answer is absolutely not. There's There's really no way for an OEM to make a perfect smartphone or a smell phone. So, um... And, and and you can have you can have the perfect smartphone, just so you know. It already exists. So the short answer is yes, you can have your perfect smartphone, uh, but an OEM won't build it for you. And if you're kind of confused on what I'm saying here, just keep listening. So oftentimes when we when we see what we do, what we have in front of us, let me just work with what we have in front of us right now. So pretty much every three to six months. OEMs will release something new, right? And as a consumer and as a techie, both, either way, it doesn't matter. We're looking for innovation. We're looking for basically something different, something new that's better than the previous model, right? So here's where we all fall victim. Somewhere in our mind, we believe that the next iteration of that device it's definitely going to have that feature that they left off intentionally on the other model. Uh, <laughs> case in point, you can just kind of look at, um, well, I won't call out any specific OEM, but some OEMs, and you'll be able to piece together who this OEM is, some OEMs are going to give you the same hardware over and over and over again, adding one piece at a time, right? They're going to add a little bit here. A little bit there and every year they're going to give you what they should have given you the previous year see <clears throat> really it just boils down to money the industry the industry and the OEMs will never give you the low-cost phone at the bang up price uh, and, and all the features that you want every year think about if the if OEMs only marked up phones Let's give them 20%. What if the, now the iPhone 6S Plus, the iPhone 7 Plus, those phones cost under 300 to make, but they're sold at almost four times the cost. What if they only mar- marked it up 20%? Would they still be a great company? Samsung phones are marked up uh, not as much as Apple's probably. I don't, I don't think so. But the, these companies... Don't get me wrong, we want them to build us this great smartphone. Whatever in your mind that is, whatever in your mind a great and the best and the ultimate smartphone is, the perfect smartphone, whatever that is in your mind, you go ahead and play that out. But as from the company standpoint, they will never, and you can quote me on this because I think you already know the answer to this. You figured this out already. Some of you have not. Some of you have. They will never ever give us what we want period because what we want are the lowest prices and the best product in our mind we want the best product we want the perfect cell phone and so by today's standards if you see phones releasing um with uh we, what we call small screens which is actually like uh, a five-inch screen now is considered to be small. Isn't it amazing how our mindset, how brainwashed that we've become to thinking that a five-inch screen is small? Think about that for a second. Because I remember when there were no cell phones. And I remember some of the first cell phones that had two-inch screens, and we were just all flabbergasted. Yeah, we move forward as technology goes, but you have to understand that somewhere in here, in your brain, where you're thinking about something, you have got to realize that the Note 9, the Note 10, the Note 8, these phones already exist. And all they're doing, and I'm, I'm not just going to say Samsung, like Apple, all these companies, LG, HTC, they're all, 
All their next iterations of the phones already exist. They're just waiting and waiting, giving us a little bit here, testing the market, see how things work, how much money can we make off of this? Because really with the OEMs, they want to make they want our money. They want our money. So they're not ever going to give us this fantastic, perfect smartphone that we think in our mind exists. And a great example is when you have phones like the um the 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 S8, you know? The S8, it's funny how people talked about other OEMs saying that they did a mashup of other phones, but Samsung is just mashing up their own products in the same line. You know, they're taking things from each line and putting them all together. Because the S8 and the S8 Plus, are they really the masterpiece that we think they are? Like, how long has the S8 and the S8 Plus really existed? We only see the leaks when they want us to see the leaks. I, um, you've got to be crazy if you think that the OEMs don't know that these things are leaking. If you don't think that the OEMs can see those leaks, the, somebody has to sign off on something. Like the big scandal with Apple back in the day uh, when supposedly the guy left the iPhone in the, in the bar. That was, you should never believe what you see. Don't believe the first thing you read. Don't believe the first thing you see. The perfect cell phone is already out there because I've got mine in my head. And that's about where it's going to probably stay. Because if it was up to me, the Galaxy S8, you know, it wouldn't cost more than 300 bucks. Start start getting the, if you, if you haven't done any research on semiconductors, go into what phones really cost to produce. The workers that are making these phones, and sometimes they have computers and stuff like that, you know, machines making them too. Go check out how much they're actually buying in quantity and go check out how much it costs to actually, how much they're actually paying people to put these things together, how much the parts cost. Think about this. Overseas, their internet speeds are, what, 100 times faster than ours, but they're paying less money. Over here, we get the slowest speeds and we're paying more money. Why is that? Well, don't be fooled in the hype about Verizon, the monopoly, and AT&T, the monopoly. The fact is, everybody sits at a table. And these guys all discuss, we're going to set the price here. You say this, I'll say this. Either way, we're still getting all their money. There's some people that don't understand the networks either. Like, we really could have just one cell phone company, but instead, they decide to split it up and more rich people make more money, more rich people make more money over here, and they all sit at a board and say, hey, we're going to split it up, you take this area, I'll take this area. Same thing goes with cable companies and, and electric companies, and all these companies do not think, don't believe that they're fighting with each other. That's all game to try to keep you blinded while they take our money. The perfect cell phone has what, to me, 5.9 inch display, Quad HD or 1080p Super AMOLED, 256 gigs on board storage, uh, a great camera with this optics. Ooh, it's got to have that sensor. <laughs> you know, it's got to have the fingerprint reader here. Ooh, I like the fingerprint reader on the OnePlus, so let's put that on there. It's got to have dual front, front front speakers. Ooh, let's do that. The perfect cell phone already exists, but the OEMs will not build it for you because they don't care what we think or consider to be a perfect cell phone or a perfect smartphone, whatever you want to call it. It does, it, it does exist, but they're not going to build it. Why? Obviously, because they want our money. Every year, even, even the Galaxy S8 is getting ready to drop. Our orders are getting ready to ship. They're shipping right now, probably, and we're going to get our phones in a few days or in a week or so, I'll say. After that hype dies down, that's why I do those videos after the hype, because I'm always excited. Just because I'm a tech reviewer doesn't mean I don't get excited. I, I just throw it out there. I'm excited. I'm pumped. But is it really a good deal for us? Of course not. So some people, when they look at, um, they look at, you know, hey, Jay, um, uh, you said that, you know, this was a good price. Well, I'm just working with the cards that I have on the table. If I could build my ultimate smartphone, it definitely would not cost over 300 bucks. I'm talking about with these 
bang them up specs. Like the S8 wouldn't cost me over three bucks because that phone probably cost about two hundred and sixty dollars to make. Leave the scraps to the OEMs, man. <laughs> that's about that's about where I'm at right now. That's about where I'm at because as a consumer, we're getting we're getting messed over. We already know this. This isn't a rant, but. A lot of people ask, what, what's the perfect smartphone? I've asked that before. I've spoken of it before. I've said, hey, listen, this, this is the ultimate smartphone. But then the next one comes out, I'm like, oh, this is the ultimate smartphone. No one smartphone can satisfy me. That's why I have so many. And the OEMs are smart. But you know who the real winners are when it comes to smartphones? Ready? Pause. Get ready. I'm going to tell you who the real, the real winners are when it comes to the, the OEMs losing. Ready? Yes? Ready? The real winner of, of this whole situation are the people who don't have smartphones, who are not connected all the time, and they decided to stick with that flip phone because a smartphone at one point was just for emergency purposes. They still have a landline. They're saving way more money than we could ever possibly save. The fact. I know people who still have a flip phone, and you know what? They don't have any problems. Oh, got good cell phone service. Oh, battery lasted for two weeks. So when, we, when I do these videos, and all of us reviews to do these videos, talking about screen on time, we're basically just settling, because this is all that they're giving us, and we're spending all of our money on it. If you think otherwise, be sure to leave a comment for real. I've got to hear your explanation on how you feel we're not getting screwed. You know, that's, that's just what it's going to be. I think if OEMs really want to take care of the customers, and this is, not, this is not just for smartphones. This is all electronic companies, just everywhere, cars, all these places. If they really want to take care of, if they really cared about consumers, which they we all know that they don't, um, they seem to think that some people are naive to think that they care about us. But we know that they don't care about us. They just want our money. If they really cared about us, they wouldn't mark things up 100 200%. They would mark it up enough to, to, to stay rich because they're rich already, so they're going to they're gonna find a way, you know? They would mark it up enough, and they would really take care of the consumers, but you and I both know that's not going to happen. So when you're building your perfect smartphone, it probably won't ever leave your head. Oh, you'll see it, but you won't pay the price that you want. I can guarantee you... If everybody could buy, and I'm just using the Galaxy S8 and LG G6 and all these phones, because this is just what's happening right now. The Moto G5 Plus is probably one of the best purchases I've said based on what's going on. Even with that, though, some people have said the screen's too small. I'm like, you know, kind of think about what you're saying. We've all, and I'm not just pointing out anyone in particular, we've all been brainwashed into believing that we need these giant screens, and we're going to pay that 800 bucks for it. We're going to pay that 900 bucks for it. But you really don't have to. You'll get the same, and because I do it all the time, people always say, well, don't match a $180 phone or a $200 phone or a $300 phone <clears throat> up against a $1,000 phone. That's not fair. Come on, son. Come on, man. You got to be kidding. You're telling me you're that brainwashed into to believing that just because a phone costs 1000 bucks, that it's way more? Like when you see videos about, well, how much more are you getting for that $500 extra or that $300 extra? That's just those people's personal opinion, because um, I think I've done plenty of videos like that. But we're all bamboozled at this point. We're all getting fooled. We're not ever going to get the perfect smartphone, because the only place it exists is in our minds and in their minds, and their job is to close us on buying at the higher price. And every time we do it, every year, every every three to six months, every 12 months for some people... Every time we do that, they win. So you've heard me saying before, if I could just grab a phone and just drop all this smartphone stuff, it would be the Moto G5 Plus. Some people say, well, how is that? Well, it's a low price, low enough to where I feel comfortable. I don't feel so robbed, you know, by the OEM. And it's functional. It works on every carrier. You know, that's just an example. I just kind of threw that one out there. Because some people have asked me before, and I've said it multiple times, that'll be the phone I run away with. At this very time in 2017. Now, if you ask me that in 20, 2018, Lord's will, we're still here. I'll give, probably give you a different answer. It might be the same. Who knows? But I'm going to get out of here. So uh, be sure to leave a comment. If you're watching this on YouTube or if you caught me live on the podcast, leave a comment. I'd like to hear from you guys. It's your man, Jay Will. I will see you on next Tuesday's podcast. Stay tuned for more. You guys are awesome.
Take care.